What was your take on what you heard from Jay Powell yesterday? How does it shape your view of equities going into today? Well, actually, I thought Jay Powell was quite dovish. And I know initially the market reacted to that. We saw the 10-year yield go down to 4.90%. And then once he started to hedge himself, which he is so good at doing, he eloquently talked about being resolute. You talked about that earlier in the show. I think that kind of put the bond vigilantes back in the captain's chair. And what did they do? They ran the 10-year yield back up to 5%. They achieved their target of 5%. But I think when you really digest what Fed Chairman Powell is saying, I think it'll be more of a dovish tilt. And you saw the CME FedWatch tool, which tracks the probabilities, the odds of what those rate hikes will be. It diminished dramatically in the month of December. So I think the rate hike possibility for the rest of 2023 and maybe for the rest of 2024 is off the table. All right. So with that in mind, Jeff, you're saying he was somewhat dovish. What is your wax word of the day? My wax word of the day is persist. And persist really applies, I think, to the U.S. consumer. It persists or relies also to the yields and treasuries. And you're also seeing just the persistence of the appetite for risk. And I know the VIX right now is above 21, but I think you're seeing the markets persist. I know we're in the middle of red October. We had a rough August and September, but I think you're going to see markets persist to move higher, which has been a theme all year for 2023. All right. So if the markets are going to persist and move higher, um, how are you viewing equities? Are there certain sectors you're in favor of? We had a mystery chart up just a short time ago. We're going to reveal that to the audience right now. That's one of your picks, a stock that you're very bullish on. No drum roll? All right, we're just going to show it right now. It's Intel. <laughs> why Intel? Why, why a chip name right now with all this disruption and dislocation in the chip sector? Well, that's the opportunity at hand, Frank. When you talk about what the market is contending with, if it's the war in Israel, if, if it's the fact that we're seeing rates move higher, we saw 30-year mortgages go above 8% for the first time, all this presents opportunity. And it's not just in the Magnificent Seven, which I do own, but if you look at Intel, if you look at Oracle, if you look at Micron, even if you look at you know some of these names, um, you know like an IBM, IBM, you know big blue, boring blue. But when you talk specifically about Intel, these are names that I think have the opportunity to move higher. When you talk about chips and chip makers in perspective of where the market is moving, I think that allows these stocks to move higher. But IBM specifically, it's a cloud player. It's been languishing and a laggard all year long. So I think if you look at where has IBM been, if we could pull up a chart, you'll see it hasn't been above $150 in almost five years. I think it's coiled, I think it has the opportunity, but all four of these stocks, you know, maybe the futuristic fabulous four, I don't know if that's a real catchy <laughs> name like the Magnificent Seven, but I think they're poised all to move higher because they're just not talked about okay. enough.